Let's join us now, ladies and gentlemen. Yinzer legend out of the University of Pittsburgh. Obviously, Miami Dolphins hero, Hall of Famer, Mount Rushmore member. One of the quickest releases in the history of football. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. Paisano Dan Marino. Yeah. 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 All right. God. What a legend. Pittsburgh legend. Yes. Yes, Pittsburgh legend. Dan. Yeah, Dan, we're on the air. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're on the air, Dan. This is the show. This is the program. Hey. Hold on. We turn him on? Am I on? There you are. There you go. Yes. Dan Marino. Yes. Dude, I cannot believe you're on our show right now. This is oh, a big cool. deal. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Okay, yeah. so you're, you're with M&M's right now. Yeah, that's what we have M&M's on our mind right now. Yeah, uh, we have peanut almost, M&M's? What's a favorite? Uh, peanut butter. Oh, wow. that's the new that's the Orange new bag. ring. We got the uh, the comfort ring for almost champions. That's what we're putting out there this week. Oh. And, uh, almost champions. Almost champions. Yeah, I'll it's me. Uh, I'm I'm like almost almost champion. Okay. Like okay. I, I didn't get quite that close. You won a Super Bowl, right? Yeah, 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 yeah I did. Yeah, my yeah. team lost in the Super Bowl. You're in a commercial yeah, with Messi. I lost too. So I've been with Bruce Smith and uh, T.O. and then Scarlett Johansson. So Scarlett Johansson was a pretty cool surprise. Wow. We know Scarlett Joe, yeah. uh, uh, wife of Colin Jost. That's right. Ty Schmidt over there had a conversation with her 15, 20, 25, 35 minutes. Yeah. Uh, just kind of at a bar a couple weeks ago in New York. Yeah, wonderful lady. Yeah, Most personal a, friend yeah, of mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> had a good time. Yeah, yeah. Ty kind of held her hostage. Time, get, get, the commercial was fun. And what did you, you're you a great actor. Okay, this yes. right into this. Can I, I have some questions? Yes, sir. <laughs> Dan. We love you. Yes. <laughs> you need to know that. For what you did for, like, Pittsburghers, mm -hmm, you're a legend. Hilarious human. I love that city. Did things your own way. Yeah. So speaking of acting, the story is Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Right. You were offered an amount of money, let's say 15 bucks. We don't have to give us the actual <laughs> amount of money, but right. let's say it's 15 bucks. Or a percentage of what the film makes going forward. That's just how I've always seen it. And you said to yourself... Give me the money. What are we talking about? <laughs> and then it goes on to obviously have the success of it. Is that accurate? And did you know that Very you were going to be so Very good accurate. acting in that movie? You almost <laughs> stole the show in that thing. Yeah. Well, I actually made Jim Carrey a star because it wasn't for me. No one knew who the hell he was. <laughs> yep. so I take full credit for his career. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, we were going to do the movie. At first, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to do it because I read the script, and then I got to meet Jim Carrey. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this could be a lot of fun. And it's either going to do really well or it's going to be nowhere. And uh, so they offer me a percentage of the gross. And knowing me, I didn't take it. <laughs> I, took, I took the short end cash, but that's okay. Yeah, it is it absolutely yeah. okay. Yeah. I, I mean, that movie made a lot of money. It did. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't even. It you made over been... $100 million. Oof. So you found out. did the research. <laughs> yeah. People yeah. have it's told it's you. Still yeah, I, I would have yeah, done, done, done pretty good. good. People have said, like, hey, <laughs> Dan, just a little heads up. This could have been what it is. And, you know, that was about the glorious times of the Miami Dolphins being on top of oh the world. God. A dolphin is obviously kicking field goals and everything's sure. going. Dolphins are all the way back right now, it feels like. Your Uncle Dan in that building. Does it feel <laughs> like it? they're they're all the way back? You know back? what? I, 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 feel, I feel like we're on the road to uh, doing something special down the line. I mean, I felt really good about us. You know, this year, and as far as going into the season, and then as the season went on, and then not making excuses, but we got kind of devastated with injuries and, and uh, really took its toll on us at the end of the year. Now, you still, that's not an excuse because everybody got to play. You know, you got to play. Everybody has hurt, you know, positions that are players. And, and uh, I think we're close. It was awesome watching uh, Hard Knocks with you in there in the building with your relationship with Tua. Another Pittsburgher there, Tone Diggs. Has yeah, I have to ask because it's a regret uh, of mine going going back and uh, looking at it. Um, you ever uh, call the Steelers and say, hey, you guys really messed up uh, that I wasn't a Pittsburgh Steeler? <laughs> No, I haven't called them. But, you should. Uh, but I have. Uh, I have. I've called them many I've, times to tell I've them thought that. About, yeah, I've thought about it many times and, you know, during my career. And, and, and you know, I think it, at the time, though, was probably the best thing to happen to me because, you know, I played four years in high school yep. right there Central. in Oakland. Central Catholic. Then, you know, played at Pitt right there in Oakland. And uh, to stay, uh, to leave, I think, made me mature a lot quicker and be ready to play a lot quicker yeah. than maybe if I would have stayed in Pittsburgh. But it would have been fun. It would have been a lot of fun. You graduated with my dad and his uh, brother, Tim McAfee and Owen McAfee. Okay. Found the yearbook. You looked awesome senior year of high school. I think we actually have the I think we <laughs> have the photo. Oh, do you have it? Oh, it's right my here, right here. Look at your fro, oh, dude. Look goodness. at your fro. 
Look at oh, your, yeah, look at that baby. My dad's got a model face right below you. Yep. Robert Matthias there. The amount of Italians that were on this page, too, by called him Redbird. <laughs> Robert there? Yeah, because yeah, his, his hair was completely red. You tell. So can you just – so you just dominated high school football, I assume, and then at Pitt, same exact thing? Well, we were pretty good in high school, but now they're – over the last, you know, two decades, they've been really good. Like, they win state championships and – and uh, play at a really high level. We we made it to the playoffs uh, pretty much all three years I was there as the, as the quarterback and uh, didn't win past the first round. So That's wild. But we were good. We were good. Yeah, I'd say, Dan, you're a, court, you're a fro, too. I mean, a fro. A a fro. Uh, Ty, who's a member of the Vegas Golden Knights, has the last question for you here. Yeah, Dan, a lot of people talk about with the way the NFL is now. You know, if, if you were to play in this era, you would throw for 7,000, 8,000 yards every single year because you were throwing for 5,000 yards when no one else was even coming close. How accurate do you think that is? And do you ever think about that? Like, oh, man, if I would have got drafted in 2,000, let's say, that I, I would probably at this point, have passed for over like 500,000 yards. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you do think about it. You know, the rules have changed and all that, but the uh, the one thing I would say is we were kind of a little bit ahead of our time going for the 5,000 yards, having Duper and Clayton and yeah. White Stevenson as, you know, our center, and, and uh, we had some really good players. And do I now think we could throw for 6,000 yards? You know, I don't have to prove it. You know, you don't have to prove I'd like anything. to switch with you. You throw yeah. in this era, I want to hit in your era. <laughs> okay. That, right, would be, right. that would be a good trade. Well, anyway, the, the uh, you know, I think if you don't have to prove it, you can say it. So, yeah, 6,000 yeah. yards. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. No thousand. doubt. What are we even yeah. talking about? 6,500. What do you well, think? Uh -huh. Your accuracy? We, everybody talks about your quick release. What do you think it is when you look back at your game? Why I you think learned? it's uh, something that I learned from a kid, you know, just kind of getting the ball up and out. My dad always talked about that. And having good footwork. I always jumped rope. And and, uh, and then the other thing is just what are those making shoes good, you making had good cleats? decisions. Yeah. What are those cleats? You're, did you have those big I ones? had it because of my Achilles. Big. My, yeah, yeah. My, my right my right ankle with the Achilles, it needed something inside. So they put like a lift, a spring in there to kind of get me on my toe. Everybody talks yeah, about the it. quick release, the quick release, the quick release. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you're also putting the ball in a keyhole. Yeah. So quick release. Uh, How are you able to maintain like a powerful arm without the big wind up everybody else has? Uh, you know, I didn't lift a whole lot. I just lift to maintain, you know, just to maintain my flexibility and all that and have enough you know, enough muscle to be able to take hits. You're a beast, dude. But, Speaking yeah, of taking hits, JJ's got some. I got a question for you. Speaking of almost champions, you speak yeah. about that. It's something that I, I have, I, people ask me, you know, how do you feel having retired without having won a championship? And we all want to win a championship, but I try and explain to people, I literally got to live out my childhood dream and do oh. something for 12 years that I dreamt about for my whole life and worked so hard for yep. how do you handle that if somebody asks you that question throughout your life you know it's the same i mean I, I in this time of year too i start thinking about you know i had one chance to play in it and i was very young i didn't play in it again and it, it gets it it's something you think about and all i could tell you is i mean i pretty much did everything you could do as a quarterback except right. you know win that super bowl right. and uh I, like I said, I was young. I thought I'd be back many a time, yes. you know, for sure. Like, we lost that game against the 49ers. I think I was 23 years old. I'm like, well, we'll be back next year. We'll be back. We got – then the next thing you know, you know, it's 17 years in the league and you're retiring and you never got back. So hard. It's hard. It's hard. And then especially now when, you you know, you're around – the atmosphere and you see uh, the quarterbacks that are playing like Mahomes and he's doing terrific. He's unbelievable. And I'm kind of pulling for Brock Purdy because he uh, he said his dad grew up being a Marino fan. So he watched, you know, yes. 13. Uh -huh. So I'm like, oh, that's my guy now. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely my guy. A great underdog story. I think he'd fit in well if he was from Pittsburgh. You know, Pittsburgh yeah. has a long line of great quarterbacks, tough quarterbacks, resilient quarterbacks. And you talk about it like when you're 23, you get to the Super Bowl, you'll be back. The Patriots set like this ridiculous standard that people yeah. think is real for 20 years like yeah I can get back to your uh, point I was a punter obviously I was riding the coattails of that coach team when I was 22 my rookie year we were undefeated till we chose to lose okay right. literally chose to lose the last two games then we go to the Super Bowl we lose and then two years later we're completely defeated like 0-14 um, oh, right. seemingly took its toll and then we get injured and we never get back we're never even close what the Chiefs have been able to do now mm -hmm. seems like the most similar to what the Patriots were able to do with the mental toughness and how hard the road is and how much luck you have to get do you sure. think that continues this week or what do you think happens with the Niners okay the so in my heart I'd like to see Brock Purdy win 
the Super Bowl, but I do think Kansas City with Mahomes. Just in, for just looking at him, I was like, this dude's not going to lose. What is that? Uh, Why do we say that? But he has it inside his competitiveness. It's inside him. He's grown up like that. He's already done it. That's a big thing, too. When you do something in sports, like I, people ask me about a two-minute drill. Well, I did it when I was younger. I did it. So you proved, you proved in your own mind you could do it. It makes it that much easier mm -hmm. next time. So he's already won two. He's been in three. This is his fourth one, right? I mean, so he's going to be very comfortable in that situation. We got a massive Dolphins fan in the back. Okay. Gumpy. He he went six to midnight when you yep. showed up Dumpy. <laughs> hey, Gumpy. Gumpy, you got a question for old Dano, pal? Yeah, Dan, you're the oh, reason I'm a Dolphins He's four down. Dan. Four down there with you're the an, beard. You're an absolute legend, Dan. Uh, I'd love to see the Dolphins get over the hump. What do you think it's going to take to make a run in the playoffs we made it back to back years playoffs in a long time just wondering your thoughts on that yeah you know I, I i was talking about this earlier i think they got to continue to grow as a team and learn from all the things this past year that happened uh felt really good going in towards the end of the year and it didn't work out for us uh but i think it's really continuing to grow continue to learn mike uh mcdaniel's offense he runs it's a it's it's a little more difficult than than you think because of all the motions and all the different tracking of the offensive linemen. So another year of that, you know, under Tua's belt, under the offensive belt, uh, will uh, go a long way. Hey, whenever you do these ad reads for companies, yeah, do you ever flub? <laughs> <laughs> Send it. Send it in, dude. <laughs> M Ms. Ladies. The Almost Champions ring, and you can see it in Las Vegas at the M&M store. Go by and see the M&M ring. No flaws. One of a kind. Send it in. Yep. Send it Send in. It in. <laughs> You're the man. Real diamonds. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh, Dan Marino. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. As we continue here at Radio Rail, I mean, that was a dream come true. Yep. Yeah. Hey, dream come true, Dan. Good to see you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Dream come Thanks, true. Man.